All the content contained in this webcast is for informational purposes only. The investments and strategies contained in this webcast may not be suitable for you. Please consult your own independent financial advisor before making any investment or trading decisions. Good morning, traders and investors around the world, and welcome to Thursday's edition of premarketinfo.com where we prepare you for the upcoming triple witch expiration tomorrow. Triple. Good morning to you, Dennis. Triple witch expiration. I'm excited. Those days are always fun to trade, Joel. Okay, nice 10-point range in the S&Ps overnight, uh, 13.05 and a quarter, the low, a uh, little bit above Wednesday's low. They're really protecting that $1,300 level in the spoos we've been talking about. The overnight high in the middle of nowhere, 13.15.75, and here we are smack dab in the middle. Yeah, we are here, Joel. Uh, basically really flat here today. Nothing too exciting happening. We do have some individual stocks in the news, though. Obviously, the big one from yesterday, testifying in front of Congress, Jamie Dimon. Yeah, Dennis, I've been thinking about that testimony, and uh, he was a little bit surly, I thought, to our to our uh, nation's uh, representatives and senators. But really, there, there's a couple questions I have, and the, I thought these guys just did an absolutely horrible job of, of talking about the actual situation. I mean, how do you just all of a sudden have a two billion dollar loss? Yeah, I think uh, on the but I think Jamie Dimon did an excellent job. So the questioning probably didn't do as well as they would have liked. I don't know if they got down to the real root of the problem. But Jamie Dimon, I thought, really did a good job of uh, definitely not giving us <laughs> as much information as we probably would have liked. I mean, they have a trade that, that that they got into basically that was a loser, and then it looks like they reversed. Okay. And they don't have a stop in. They don't have a target. They don't even know how much money they're going to lose on the trade. Yeah. I wonder what the potential reward was on the trade. I mean, I don't know anything except they have an unlimited loss on the books. Yeah, I know. that, And that's what we always stress to all the traders. is It's all about when you're trading, it's all about risk management. That's the only thing. Discipline, discipline, discipline. That's the number one thing that is going to make you profitable or make you fail. If you have bad discipline and you let your losers become huge losers and take over your trading portfolio. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're making money every day when you have that one big loss that wipes out last year's gains or last quarter's gains. Uh, you're not going to be in the business very long. Not saying J.P. Morgan, obviously, this loss you know, is still, they're still saying they're going to be profitable in the quarter. But we're just trying to highlight that it's important to have risk management and you need to have an out. You need to know where to get out of the trade before you enter the trade. Okay, just technically on J.P. Morgan, uh, let's keep an eye on yesterday's low, 33.63. That coincided with uh, Tuesday's high, 33.78. We are trading above that in the pre-market, a break below 33.60, and uh, we got a nice buck drop here till 32.50. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple of the stocks in the Big Ten. There was some pretty good action in J&J yesterday. J&J well, had three upgrades. Actually, we did the show, and we did it so early, it hadn't even been upgraded yet, but we knew the news already, so we knew the news was positive. The stock was trading up, but then three analysts jumped on the bandwagon because that merger was going to close sooner and help their earnings, and the stock just blew through the 64 number, got all the way up to 64.70. Now, keep an eye. I'm going to tell you right now, there's 65. I know you'll say, oh, well, you said 64 yesterday. Well, 65 <laughs> has three, four tops. Like we're, it's not always perfect. When we say when there is fundamental news, stocks can take out resistance supports. Fundamentals always take precedence over technicals. But today there isn't fundamental news. And I'll tell you, if it gets up there to the 65 area, there has been big institutional selling pressure there. And those high frequency guys love to sniff it out. And they'll be in front of them in the 64 uh, 90s. Uh, you can pretty much guarantee that. But again, if it takes out 65, then all bets are off. So see how whenever I'm entering trend, just going back to the whole risk management thing. I know where my out is. And the, in the case of the J&J, it was if the stock trade above 64. Now we never even had a chance to play it that way because it opened above. Above 64 in the regular session, anyways. So, um, but the stock is is here trading down. Just actually, it's trading up four cents here. Um, I actually put a ticker uh, just for you, uh, the people that have been watching us regularly. I just put a ticker here in the corner, so to show you the last three pre-market trades. So as it trades, you'll see them go by there. Uh, but yeah, J and J, 65 dollars is uh, where I'm bearish, Joel. 
Okay, uh, just from a technical perspective, yesterday in that stock, we did do the show uh, early yesterday. Uh, just a note to your traders that are following the pre-market activity. Uh, in the pre-market, it did get to 64.75. It's had a lot of wild activity. But just note that in the day session, when it got up to that area, it failed. 64.70 was the high. So your pre-market traders are also there in the regular sessions. Uh, as far as the high goes, uh, the stock broke down, sellers came in. And just to note, how you see how this thing came all the way down and filled the gap uh, from being a buck yeah. and a half above that area. I mean, that's a rare situation where a stock opens, gaps open that much higher, yeah. and then comes down and trades down the previous day's low. I mean, it was quick, and you would have had to have your bid out there. But as crazy as it was, the pre-market technicals and the technicals that we post on our site daily for you guys came into play. Yeah, and that's what we talk about. You have to look at yesterday's highs, yesterday's lows, and, and different reference points when you're trading stocks. And if you were doing this, and when the stock started coming down and filling this gap, we're talking about this gap right here in the chart, when it started to fill that, you know there's not a lot of reference points in here because it hadn't been trading there for a little while. Uh, and as the stock pulled back, it filled the gap entirely, got to the previous day's high, a 63.27, uh, breached it just also slightly a 63.20, or 6318 and then started to bounce and obviously rallied up from there so you take your line just like I've drawn on there put it there and uh, that's your target and if you would have given yourself and say oh I'm gonna buy it if it gets yesterday's high you would only had nine cents of risk and the stock turned around and rallied and you could have made over a point before we move on to our movers I want to talk about a few others in the Big Ten uh, AT&T was able to stick its head above 35, but unable to close above that level. Yeah, AT&T went up, took out 35, kind of a tractor beam type of play. We always talk about these. The high-frequency guys were in front, but it did take the guy, the 35 guy out yesterday. Got as high as 35.05, so just breaching it. Was that, was that right, Joel? 35? I got a uh, 35.06. Oh, guys. 35.06, so I'm penny off. But uh, did just barely breach it. Uh, is still kind of hanging out here now. But the one thing to keep in mind is that big institutional seller that was at 35 is gone. So the stock is a little bit more open to kind of do what it wants to do. This stock has been marching. It has been making new 52-week highs. I still don't want to be short this issue uh, just because the trend is your friend. You always play the trend as your friend. You can draw the trend line on here. And you can see you know, the stock just continues to move higher. Uh, maybe you want to wait for a pullback to that trend line to buy. It's all up. To, it's all a matter of what your risk parameters are too but as stocks make new highs they seem to be get newer highs okay ibm dennis how how often are you going to see a formation on the downside and the upside as you right now as you're witnessing in ibm look at this 192 yeah. 14 yeah. i mean you could call it up to 192 70 let's just call it 192 192.50 for simplicity's sake. Kind of range bound here. The last four sessions, good for pointing that out there, Joel. Definitely, we'll call it 192.14 was the low, but the low 192s, the stock is finding buyers and it's finding sellers up in this 195 area. Uh, besides that one day where we went up to 196.70, the previous day's highs, we had a 195.14. Uh, just before that, we had a 195.82, but then yesterday we had a 195.19. So you're finding buyers in the low 192s, and you're finding sellers up here in this 195 area. And if you go back and look at the uh, pattern that it had back in February in this 192 area, held there, tight ranges, consolidations, and you saw what happened after that. So if you, uh, you long-term traders, you're looking to look at Beamer here. Here's a spot to... Uh, pick a, a long entry and then also have a stop uh, below 192. Uh, similarly, CVX, I mean, someone is stepping up to the plate here at wow. 99.50, 99.60. Oh, my God. Who's in there? Warren Buffett? That's crazy, Joel. There is four lows here within a couple of cents of each other. I think we pointed this out on the, on the show a couple of days ago. I remember we were saying there was a potential double bottom here in this 99.70, 99.60 area. Well, four days ago you had a low of 99.60. Then the next day you had a low of 99.57. Then the next day you had a low of 99.56, and yesterday you had a low of 99.71. Call that area major, mm -hmm. major support. We got a quadruple bottom there. Stock keeps drifting up. If it was to breach that, I'd be real nervous because you had this huge run up going up. But until that's breached, I guess you're a buyer down there. Maybe it can be a what do you say, quintuplet bottom? Is that how you say five? I'm not even sure, Joel. 
And uh, we're going to start doing, learning how to say that because we see <laughs> that in the market. Uh, <laughs> Maybe somebody can um, email us and tell us what Five Bottoms is called. <laughs> we could Google it. Um, well, also, probably, yeah. just looking at that, too, there's very few areas where you can actually try a, a reversal in a trade. I mean, you have to look at that area as support, but this might be one. This is one of the few occasions where, okay, I'm going to buy it, but if it goes through here, you know, also it could be a possible short. You have to look at these areas as both support and resistance. And then last thing, it's not a triple bottom, but it is a double bottom here in Procter Gamble, uh, finding a home here right under 62.30, 62.21. And Dennis, if you talk about a double bottom, then you got a double top there at 62.77, almost identical ranges. Very tight Trade range. TradeTheRange.com. Yeah, very tight range for Procter and Gamble here. And this whole 63 area, if we look back just over the course of the last two weeks of trading on uh, late may you had a couple tops just above 63 early june you had a couple tops above 63 and then a few days ago you had a couple tops above 63 so there's definitely some institution or some type of major seller in the in the low 63s there it seems to just sniff its nose above 63 and is beat back down so keep that in mind thing needs to start getting up into this mid 63s for it to start to think about the 64 handle Okay, uh, if you want to look at an ugly chart, folks, let's pull up Credit Suisse. Wow. This one not pretty today, folks. This stock is getting killed. Uh, the news, their National Central, or, or their bank over there, is advising Credit Suisse to raise <laughs> capital, either by doing another stock offering or cutting their dividend. This is never good news for a stock. Obviously, all the European banks have not done well in the last three or four months. I mean, we hear about it on CNBC every day. So it's no news to anyone. But this stock is breaking down, making new 52-week lows. Bring up the uh, the daily. 52-week lows? You're talking about 10-year lows, Is Dennis. it really? Oh, it is, too. Lows. Yeah, I just yep. went out. Yep. Well, I just went out six years. That's all I've got. Uh, and it's breaking down through there, too. So, man, this stock, just not pretty. Obviously, lots of problems over in Europe. Be very, very careful if you're picking bottoms on this one because there's not a lot of reference points. Well, Dennis, unless you use the pre-market low of 1772, uh, which happens to coincide with the low that we had uh, back in November of 2002, Dennis. 2002. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 2002. Joel, I, traded, I remember that. You're digging remember deep. That. You're digging I, deep to find these numbers, yeah, Joel. Going I remember back I shorted 10 years it on pre-market I shorted info. it in 1776 because <laughs> I thought it was going to the previous month's low of 13 and a quarter. Uh, <laughs> but I've uh, I'm going to cover it when it today when it gets back down there. <laughs> uh, but anyways, keep an eye on that pre-market low. Got a little bit of consolidation there. 147,000 shares have traded. I just 17.70. Wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bounce there. Ugly, ugly chart. Uh, I don't want anything to do with this stock, Joel. I think we should move on. I don't even want it on my screen. <laughs> We've got we've got quite a few other movers. Hey, my initials my initials are in the triple D D D D uh, in the news here today. D D D, which is uh, 3D Systems Corporation secondary offering pricing at twenty seven dollars. Stock is getting beat up here in the pre market, trading at twenty seven eighty right now after closing at twenty nine fifty six. We always say these secondary offerings can sometimes act like a magnet, so keep that in mind as this. Uh, stock has been drifting down in the pre-market it's starting to get close to that pre-market low 2775 uh what's your take just if it i mean this is your stock with your initials if, it's, <laughs> if the if the offering's at 27 why is it trading at 2775 <laughs> that's it well obviously sometimes these things those offerings secondary offerings often can act like a floor in the stock uh, and we often say they act like a magnet but they act like a floor sometimes too and uh Sometimes you'll see them trade and, and hold above there, and sometimes you'll see them pull back and get right to that offering price. So it's not usually that surprising that the stock trades somewhat above those, but usually those secondary offerings can sometimes act like a floor, uh, except in the AIG case from there from a while ago <laughs> when, the, when the floor got breached and the thing went down like five bucks, but we were having problems a few weeks ago too. Well, if I was getting the stock in a secondary at 27, I'd be out there whacking the 2775 bid. But uh, we'll see. If, we'll see. Keep an eye. 2775. Obviously, someone has an opinion there in that stock. 
Smithfield Foods, Joel, they reported earnings here this morning. Stock is trading down significantly as well. We've got not a lot of volume here, 800 shares only traded. So you always got to be cautious when you don't have a, a lot of volume on the move. We had the low of June was 1884. Uh, keep that number in mind. Stock trading just slightly below there right now. Uh, obviously needs to hold that. We go out to the weeklies. Uh, if we started to break down below that area, you've got this uh, double bottom back at 1779 uh, and 1786 from late September. And then in late July, you had a, or in early August, I'm sorry, you had a bottom at 1805. So this whole 18 area would probably give you some support if you breach this 1870 uh, low from the other day. Very good, Dennis. You are doing excellent <laughs> on your technical analysis. I don't even, I don't even know what to say. You taught here. me well, Joel. You taught <laughs> me well. <laughs> taking that, uh, taking the pre-market low here. Uh, very spotty trades here in the 1860-65 area. Certainly, if it can't hold there, you got 18 bucks on the mind. But what? What, aren't people eating it anymore or what? Well, there's a lot of food stocks in the news. Uh, and if you want to talk, there's definitely other ones in the news here as well. Uh, Eat, which is EAT, speaking of, uh, they got an upgrade today and it is trading up. So not all the food stocks are trading down here. 3060, it's trading right now here, Joel. And here's another one. Man, these charts are starting to form some technical levels here. Look at this $30 level on EAT. You've had multiple lows here, all near this $30 level. It's getting a lift here now. The the high there of the move, and well, actually, I'm just going to go out to a daily, but uh, the high of the move, obviously, is struggling up at 32, and I don't think it's going to get there today. But this whole $30 level, Joel, giving you some pretty nice support. Yeah, spotty trades here hit 3060 in the pre-market. Uh, looking at the daily activity, I uh, expect sellers here at the $31 level had a high at 3091 yesterday. Previous day's high was 3118. So I think someone's uh, lowered their expectations down from uh, 3118, 3133 down to 31. Is there any size there at 31, or you can't see out that no, far? I don't see out that far there, but uh, well, actually, I just don't see any size there at all, so I can see out that <laughs> far, but I just don't see much there. But always those whole numbers, those whole numbers always seem to come into play a little bit anyways. Uh, got a few other ones moving, Joel. Uh, what, what do you, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Wicker. I want to go to Wicker Chairs. Wicker Chair, P-I-R. P-I-R, yeah. Pier 1 Imports. My wife goes in there every once in a while. I'm always kind of scared. Some of the stuff is, you know, it's a hit and miss store. Some of the stuff ain't, isn't that uh, expensive. Than other t and and the other things in that store are really expensive. So I'm always scared when she goes in there. I'm always hoping it's going to be something cheap where she's bought some $5 candle or something and not some $300 or $500 wicker chair. <laughs> But P Hit the boost this morning. Now is it going to hold this $16 level? Light volume here again, Joel. Only traded 1,500 shares here this morning. Uh, one big trade of 1,582. Is getting a boost, but looking here, just the last three or four days, we're starting to form a real bottom this whole 1,550 area. So that area is critical support. Needs to hold that 1,550 area. And I would look at yesterday's high as 1,624 as being your first stopping point on the upside. If we get above there, then we can start to run because we don't have a lot of reference points up until seventeen dollars. Wow! Yeah, in the pre-market, uh, definitely getting the boost. Like you said, not very much volume. I think someone's just painting the tape here so they can sell it at sixteen bucks. That's possible. That is possible. They do do that in the pre-market. IGT. Uh, is announcing stock buyback, one billion dollar stock buyback. Stock is trading up over a buck here. Thir it's trading fourteen nineteen right now after closing at oh. thirteen twenty two. Look at these oh, couple what a of short. highs. Yeah, look at these what couple of highs here. I like this area fourteen seventeen. Uh, the day before was fourteen. Uh, I'm trying fourteen eleven. So you had two uh, highs just uh, from five days ago in the low fourteens. It looks like it's coming into some pretty good resistance here. I'll even draw a little chart little line on the chart there for you guys. Uh, it's coming into a little bit of resistance up here in the low 14. Starts to get above there, this whole 14, 19 area. Then I'd get a little nervous. But definitely some resistance in this 14, 15 to 14, 25 area. Yeah, uh, just someone's just probably puking here. 12,000 shares is traded in the pre-market right here at 14, 19. 
ugly looking chart here. I guess uh, the technical analyst uh, for IGT is uh, starting to buy back at least at a time where the stock has uh, been declining. But uh, they're not going to do it on the open like everybody thinks. Uh, beautiful support. Now we'll come up to this 1360 area where the old double top was. So that would be the bottom in the stock today for me. Uh, that's all we've really got time here for. Obviously, jobless claims today could have a little bit of movement off of that. Any closing thoughts? Boy, just what a quiet week so far, Dennis, for a triple witch. I mean, we've had a couple overnight moves. We're just hanging out here in the low 1300s. Uh, snuck below 1300 a couple times in the week and just can't get a boost. But uh, I wrote a bullish weekly outlook over the weekend, and we're holding 1300 so I'm staying bullish until we get under there. That's our show for today, folks, and we will be back with you tomorrow.